This is Carla Atherton, director of the Healthy Family Formula and host and producer of the Children's Health Summit 4. In response to the rapid rise in conditions such as autism, cancer, ADHD, GI distress, anxiety, depression, asthma, skin conditions, learning disabilities, and autoimmunity, the topic of this year's summit is preventing and reversing childhood chronic illness. And today I'm very excited to be interviewed by one of my brilliant Healthy Family Formula health coach trainees, Courtney Homer. So please introduce yourself, Courtney. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Carla. Um, I have known Carla for many, many years now, first um, reaching out to her in service of trying to support my family and then got on board with um, really raising my awareness about how to nurture, in some cases reverse, and create a really healthy family. Um, and I'm super excited about our topic today. I feel like between the two of us, uh, we have enough babies behind us and years of experience that maybe some of our wisdom can be shared through uh, life experience with our, with our viewers. Awesome. Thank you, Courtney, for taking on this challenge. I really appreciate it. I think our topic today, like you said, is really, really important. And we got like a whack of stuff to cover. And we don't want to overwhelm you, so we're going to try and keep it as succinct and, and clear and uh, relevant as possible. So, Courtney, hit me with your first question. All right, Carla. Uh, so, there's so many stages of um, pregnancy, but if, we, if one is out there and has the opportunity to plan their pregnancy, let's cover that topic. So, key health and lifestyle considerations for both men and women before they get pregnant is where I'd like to start. Okay, that's awesome. That's really awesome because first and foremost, I want to say to parents that we don't all plan our pregnancies. I don't think I planned one of mine, and I have three children. <laughs> they were happy accidents, you know, right? Because that this happens. This is kind of the nature of being um, human, you know, as like we procreate, and it doesn't always happen at the time that we plan, and, and we don't – it's all – usually welcome not always welcome it's you know it's, it happens <laughs> right it happens but yeah. um i think that and, and i think the reason why you know paying attention to preconception at this day and age is because we don't really live in these healthy environments anymore we don't really have healthful um practices and we're kind of losing touch with our natural rhythms right so i mean naturally you would yes. you, preconception is sort of like something that would have been you know, part of other cultures where they just kind of do this, you know, they nurture their themselves when they are um, fertile in that stage of their menstrual cycle, or they nurture themselves, you know, they, they go off and be by themselves when they are releasing, you know, all, all of that, you know, in that yeah. time of menstruation. And the men, you know, they take care of them, their virility in themselves, and, and they, they, they have practice, they had practices, and still some places today have these practices that keep the, them, themselves well but we have really disconnected from that so now we really need to think about um, preconception and if we haven't though I want to definitely say that it's okay you know we can fix <laughs> things we don't have to feel guilty but being here and, and learning this you know might really inform people you know who are you know wanting to become pregnant or you know, ways that you can help them to nurture themselves and encourage them and be there for them as supports. And also, you know, if you're whatever stage you're at, maybe you're already pregnant, maybe you're just had a child, maybe your children are older, all of these things really inform us um, to, to make that even better at any stage. So first things first, um, there are many things, you know, like right now in our environment that are creating this toxic environment, um, to a toxicity in our bodies. Um, so if you're going to be doing, you know, any sort of detox, this is the time to do it. It's before you get pregnant because, you know, there are lots of studies showing, I mean, that one in particular that's been published that says that there, you know, our babies are born with, you know, over 200 toxins. I, I've, I've even heard the number being up to 280, but let's go with 200. I mean, that's a lot. That's enough to be, you know, to be toxic with in their cord blood. So, I mean, this is before the baby's even born, and it comes from the environment that the parent's in, but also from the mom's own body. Um, so it is really important to be, yeah. if you're going to be doing that, if you know you've had exposures, if you have had amalgam fillings, if you're, you know, been spraying your garden and then realize, like, that's probably not a great idea, I'm going to stop now. But getting that out of the body before yeah. you get pregnant is a very good idea. Um, and then taking care Carl, of I would even I would interject. 
Yeah, yeah. I would interject there and say that just, I think it's fair um, to make the assumption that you do have toxins in you, yeah. even if you don't can't think and reflect, oh, I got an exposure here or there. Yeah. Um, it, it's pervasive now and they're unavoidable. And that might be news to some people, um, but it's a fact now, even if you're squeaky clean, eater, water drinker, even yeah. constant detoxifier, just the air that you're breathing every day um, has toxins in it that yeah. we need to continuously and proactively be toxing, detoxing from. So I think for anyone listening, this is a conversation for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I yeah. think too, like even in the food, if you don't eat organic food, you know, like listen to Stephanie Seneff's talk on the summit and yeah. she, well, she gets, gives us the lowdown on that for sure. So yeah, I mean, there are lots of things that, uh, that are creating this toxic environment for us. And, and this is one thing that's really, it's a really good opportunity to deal with that right now. And then getting rid of all of the chemical cleaners in your home, you know, going to something natural, like, you know, baking soda, vinegar, you know, like essential oils, things like that. Um, and also, you know, another thing in the environment, though, I think is really, really important that we cannot forget, and we're going to keep returning to this throughout this interview, I think, um, Courtney, but um, is, is Wi-Fi and, you know, wireless technology, cell phones, you know, a lot of women, um, you know, a, a lot of men, sorry, are wearing, you know, having their cell phones in their pockets. You mentioned this before we started recording, and I've actually been like, on it. I'm looking. Last night, even, I was telling a male family member, get that out of your pocket because there are studies that show yeah. that, that, that the, the sperm count is 50% less in men who carry their cell phones in their pocket. So the 50%. And uh, so it's what- just one generation. Yeah, not even a generation. One it's generation. Not, like it's like in 10 years, you know, like 10 years, really. Like if you think about how short of time that is, it is destroying sperm, and but also not even the ones that don't die they're damaged. So it's actually like Wi-Fi and radiation caused by cell phones, um, cell phones in particular, because they're very close to the body, but also Wi-Fi, like that, you know, if you have a router in your house, uh, many, many, many different sorts of EMFs, uh, sources um, that we'll talk, we actually, I have a couple of talks with Lloyd Burrell and one with Peter Sullivan, listen to those if you want more information about that. But these things are actually damaging DNA. Right, so there. So the ones that do survive are damaged. So what's going to happen with those babies that are conceived with damaged sperm? So you know we don't know what we're doing. Yeah. We really don't know what we're doing with the, this technology. I think it's right. a cool tool, but also we need to be careful. It's something. It's not. This is not a toy. It's a technology that we need to use as a tool. So um, that's one yeah. thing I really want to stress. Um, and then those the the Wi-Fi and all that stuff. That stuff comes into play again in later in these other stages of you know preg pre pregnancy pregnancy childbirth right with your children as well but we'll get into that yeah. um, so but for, for specifically our men um, you know protect your sperm <laughs> and the, your future yeah. babies and and you know so even yeah so okay that's another thing I want to mention about environment so cleaning up our environment super important the air we you know we breathe um, the food we drink or we eat, the, the water we drink, those things really need to be cleaned up at, at that point if we have this opportunity. And so, um, and stress reduction, I think, is another issue. Um, we are, our children, uh, you know, we, <laughs> to handle being pregnant, to respond rather than react, you know, to train our own, you know, central nervous system in the way that will be conducive to good health rather than, um, you know, all this, the health issues that can come along with high stress. Uh, that's really important, yeah. learning those practices before getting pregnant. Even when you're pregnant, even when you're after, you know, all, all through life, all through stages, it's a practice. And so that will um, uh, really help for when you're pregnant because what we're finding now, and there are many, again, many studies, uh, research being done into this, and we're talking about this with Nikki Gratrix and Pam mapomel Hemley for the, the summit as well. But, um, you know, we, we understand now yeah central nervous system is actually being developed when that baby is in utero. And so, you know, that baby can actually be born yeah. fight or flight. They can be born stressed out. They can be born with these neural pathways sort of grooved in that make them more, more uh, susceptible to having a high stress um, existence. And we don't, we don't want that. We, we don't want that in any yeah. way. So that's another thing that we can mitigate, you know, if we have the opportunity. Um, and then there's another, just one more thing yeah. I to mention in this category, Courtney, is the gut health. And so when a mama's gut health is really important for a baby's gut health. And 
gut health, um, again, we're talking about this with a few other talk speakers. One in particular is Kiran Krishnan, who talks about the importance of the proper balance of microbes in the gut. Um, and so that is yeah. essential for life. Like the, these microbes actually control our mental health. They, they digest things for us. Yeah. And, you know, like we, we don't have proper nutrients even absorbed because if we don't have the proper um, balance of microbes in the body. And it, it, it is, the, the, if we talk about root causes of ill health, that is where, yeah. right? That's the, it's in the gut. It is in the gut. And so yeah. that's really important too. And how do we do that? Um, you know, we eat good food. We eat, you know, raw foods, yeah. so the right micro, the microbes on it. We eat, you know, very, really good fiber. We reduce our sugar. So just a healthy diet can take you a long way. It sounds like a lot of stuff, but they, in, in it, like really like yeah. in a nutshell, <laughs> it's about eating well, drinking well, sleeping enough and mitigate, you know, really doing, um, really focusing on stress reduction and re and cleaning up the environment. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm sitting here and I just, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about becoming pregnant and I just heard you, I'd probably go, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Okay. That's a lot. But I, I think to like summarize it all, it's what you're asking and, and suggesting is to just look around your life, your day-to-day -day life, and bring a level of awareness that you've never brought before. How am I treating myself? What is my home like? What is my partner like? What is, what is the rhythm to our, our lives? Are we living consciously and making conscious choices, or have we just fallen into a pattern and done what we've always done? Now is an awesome opportunity kind of to check yourself yes. and say, all right, are there areas where I want to wake up a little bit more on? that would be beneficial to this baby to be, but also to myself and my partner. Um, and the answer is going to be yes for all of us. And these are just five topics that you hit on that areas for people just to go research more uh, in more detail. Yes. The intention is not to overwhelm. It's just to raise awareness. And now is the best time ever to be more of a conscious consumer because you're creating another human being. And you know what, though, Courtney, it's not really such a tall order because if you know any woman or man, like, no, it's not like that, they are planning a, a, a child to have a child, they are looking at everything, they're researching. Yes, it. you're already doing it. It's just, like a, it's just funneling that, 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 um, that research into a specific like area that we might not have thought about before, right? So it's there, there are okay. So you said air, food, water. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, so you said air, food, water, stress, Wi-Fi played in there, um, gut health, and then just this just checking the, the totality of the environment and saying, like, all right, this is an awesome time for me to start really making conscious choices about my life and the life to be um, yeah. in my, my effort and my, my partner, my, our efforts to start making attempts to get pregnant. Okay. Great, 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 great. So you're pregnant now. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about, with not deep diving, but the stages of fetal growth with, I think, an emphasis on those first few months where you might not even know you're pregnant? How, how essential are they? And when you, you know, you were using the word detox before, but it's like, okay, I'm pregnant now. Now what? Yep. Well, I mean, again, you know, we're always looking at those, those things at the very beginning that we just talked about, this, the list that you just rattled off. Always, 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 and forevermore. Yeah. You know, it's not just do that, and then you're, you're healthy enough now, you know, you've grown enough, like we don't have to really no. anymore. No, but you are right. At this, this, these very early stages, that's when, you know, we have a lot of, like these things have higher importance, okay? So, again, like when mom, mom's pregnant, you know, um, like one of the things I see that's really kind of concerns me quite a bit to really put it lightly is the cell phone sitting on the belly. And so that, that, that baby is surrounded with fluid. Um, that baby's brain is developing. Um, you know, it's it, so once you do know, or I guess if you, <laughs> if you, if you're trying to get pregnant, don't be doing that because it's very, very damaging to that developing. Yes. Baby. And it's, it causes all kinds of things. And I'm like, you know, if we're, if we're talking about um, EMF exposure, we're talking about DNA damage, like I was saying, even yeah. to her, but also to that, that baby, um, you know, 
the central nervous system, like, you know, developing into this fight or flight because it's very stressful, highly inflammatory, um, you know, to be exposed at that, especially at that level. And those babies are very susceptible because their, their brains are more fluid than the adult brain. And also their, their skulls are not developed to the, to the extent that adults are. So we're really, really um, causing a lot yeah. of trouble for those babies when we're not cognizant to that danger. Uh, because I, I, I consider that to be a danger, yes. like being exposed to arsenic or being like, you know, secondhand smoke when or smoking when you're pregnant, you know, right. drinking alcohol, all these things we know not to do when we're pregnant. Um, that, that this is one of those things. We need to put that in that category. Um, so, you know, and so, yeah. You know, I, I, think, I was going to say, I think people know that and hearing you already know it, but this is now saying like, okay, you need to legitimately add it to the category of I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to drink, and I'm going to keep my cell phone and Wi-Fi away from my body. It has to move into that I'm not going to category. Yes. Hell no yeah. category. It's the hell no category, okay? <laughs> okay. Right? right? Okay. So, I mean, I, I was. Yeah, I'm with you. I didn't know. I didn't like. I we didn't have. I didn't have a cell phone. When I, my I was having my baby, so I was lucky because I didn't even have to make that choice. Like it was easy yeah. to, you know, go in the bar and not, you know, that stuff was easy. But now they're everywhere. Yeah. So parents have a real challenge. You know, you. I was just saying to you before we recorded that if I'm in a in a family gathering and what and, and a specific group of you know. Yeah. My, members and all the teenagers have cell phones all of the adults have cell phones and then there's a pregnant one in the room and then one a little toddler and you know and so and so literally if we are together there's like 12 cell phones in that same room so we just need to really go uh, wow. what are the solutions well everybody dock their phones and go check in the other room like it sounds crazy but it's not it's like it's almost like when all the smokers go outside to smoke you know like okay that's up to them but yeah, we don't want yeah. that two year old in the same room all the smokers go out to smoke and so and you know so I, it just having different practices like that once more people are aware and they find that you know yeah. the importance um i think that you know we can really kind of make shifts and you might be that mom <laughs> i mean i never you might be that mom i remember yeah I was pregnant the microwave was one of those things that I did not I was like my mom said you know yeah. what when you don't stand in front of a microwave and I'm like why and this was like because it gives off radiation and blah 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 and I'm like it does and so I remember leaving the room if anybody used a microwave and I still do like I still I don't know yeah. I'm doing that to myself so I and I was that mom I was that pregnant you know paranoid pregnant lady and like, you know what own it just be that mom. Right. It's okay. You, you know have, what? This is your baby. Yeah. This is uh, this is your this is your job. Hey, it's up to me to keep that baby safe. I don't care about criticism or thinking I'm crazy because my baby. I'm gonna do whatever I, it takes. So I I, I agree with you. It. I agree with you. I also think when I reflect back, or when I see someone who's pregnant, I reflect back to my pregnancy. People give you a lot of birth, a wide birth when you're pregnant. So yeah. play that card. Um, <laughs> to you know i am i am respond i am creating this person and i am fully wholly responsible for the well-being of this person so i I do, I do think it takes a new level of discipline awareness and then discipline now to be pregnant and, and raise a child in today's world then you might be um you might be leading the way and that can be a little uncomfortable but I, you do have the benefit of being pregnant and people do expect pregnant <laughs> people yeah. women to um you know to step out of the room when it's not the norm <laughs> and that's okay yeah. um i think you'll 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 own that really beautifully um yeah really beautifully okay the next one i would like to shift to okay i'm pregnant everything's awesome this baby is growing i am my environment is, has been improved or i'm working on it, my food all the things we just talked about yep Let's like cut the chase. Mm -hmm. I need support. Um, I want uh, my OBGYN to be on board with my values and what I want. I want a pediatrician or maybe a family mm -hmm. doctor who's going to align well with me. And then I want to create a birth plan. So uh, I think this is like a multimodal question, but how the, I guess I would propose how do you identify? Um, partners in this process, right? An OBGYN, um, a pediatrician or family doctor who will be the best fit for you and your family, 
which would beg, how do we even know <laughs> what your values are around this? Like, where do you begin with that? Okay. And then how do you find them once you get them? Yes, that's an excellent question. And I think that it takes some shopping around. First and foremost is to remember that you're the one, like you're the person doing the hiring here. You don't just, you don't have to settle for whoever yes. the local person is. And, and even if they don't quite fit with what you want. Um, but I think first, actually, before you even find a support is defining what you actually want. Yes. Like, what are you looking for? Like, yes. are you wanting to, I feel like, I never really experienced, you know, like you might be a second child or maybe the first, but I, I've never really experienced a home birth. I'm not, I don't really know anybody who's had one, but I'm kind of interested in that. Or, you know, maybe you would be yes. moving toward like a doula and a midwife rather than an OBGYN, you know? Um, so you, or, or you use a team, right? So you go to an OBGYN or your general practitioner, which here where I am, it was just a general practitioner who did all the, you know, the babies, you know, they were on those cases, but you know, where you are, yeah, people do OBGYNs and, um, you know, they might want a team. So they might want the OBGYN because they, you know, well, what if there's medical intervention involved or whatever, you know, if there's an emergency, yeah. like that, they might want that security um, and feeling that that's secure. But I also feel that, you know, I know that midwives and doulas are highly trained. They know what they're doing. They, I mean, you know, yes. we had babies for thousands and thousands and thousands of years before we had hospitals. And so, I mean, this is, these people know what they're yeah. doing. You have to find who fits with you um, and what your plan is. So you get really yeah. curious because you said a birth plan. Like when I, when I had my first yeah. baby, I, I did actually have a birth plan. Not a lot of people do. Like they, not a lot of people even think that there's a plan to be had. They just kind of. Well, let's say, what is, how do you tell people what a birth plan is? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's basically, you know, figuring out and, and laying out, and you usually write it down and whatever, um, what you want to yeah. have in that birth. So your, my goal is to have a natural childbirth. Um, I don't want, you know, the X, Y, Z intervention. I would like to use a birthing pool. Um, I, you know, if I, if I stall at a certain yeah. point, this is when we do intervention. Um, you know, if you're doing a home birth, like this yeah. is my, where I'm going to say, no, we'll get, we're going to go to the hospital or this is what we're going to ride out or, you know, so you're yeah. Right, yeah, being very clear. You know, I don't want music. I don't want a bunch of people in the room. Um, I want, you know, X, this person as my support this person knows my birth plan and that person's going to help me to execute it in my most painful hours, you know, where I just don't, I don't care. You know, like it's like they encourage, you know, so yeah. you're defining your supports, you're defining who those people are. Um, and, and so, you yeah. know, oh, and, and after the birth plan, like if you share that with like, let's say you do a hospital birth, um, you know, you need to be clear on things like, do I want my child to have a vitamin K shot? Do I want my child to be taken away? Yeah. Do I want them on my chest so I can nurse that baby right from yes. the get go? Right? Um, do I? So am yeah. I using specific, you know, um, interventions like um, I don't know, like uh, I guess vaccinations or other other you know, and um, things like that. Yeah. That people might that? Routinely do. So you have to be very clear. Routinely. About what people don't want. Yeah. Um, when I was, you made me think of Carla is if you do, I would encourage people to interview and say, go to an OBGYN and say, you know, play out for me the typical childbirth that you, you participate in. What does it look like? What are the steps? And uh, if he or she doesn't tell you about, you know, like the vitamin K shot, are, are there any um, vaccines that the child has given at birth? Uh, are forceps used like I want to get the details you're not passing judgment you're just gathering data then you call a doula and find out what that process looks like and that's going to just make you so much more informed and you might say hey I want a little of that that feels right and I'll take a little of that together and then you can start creating a birth plan and I would be um I would be suspicious isn't the word that I want to use um it's a better word, Carla. <laughs> I would be, um, I would take pause if someone just um, sort of blanketed the experience. Like you come in, you check in, you know, you go to labor for a little bit and then we push out a baby. No, you want specific details. Like, you know, is it a hospital? If you go to a hospital, is it a hospital that the baby comes out and the baby is allowed to crawl up your belly up to nurse for the first time? Or do they take the baby away? You don't get to hold it. Yeah. They, you know, do what what they do what they do or do they let um the vernix stay on the baby or do they wipe wipe it all off there's so many things and i think the only way 
um, is to talk to women who've had babies and do your interviewing. And just think of this as like life is a huge experiment. Think of this as part of your experimentation where you're getting all the data and then you can create a, a plan with some great information that why would you know otherwise that you've never had a baby like way, right? Exactly. And when you have that idea in your mind and you can really see, okay, this sounds right to me, this feels right to me, then that's where you, that's when you do your interview, right? Then that's when you find the support. Like there is yeah. online. And actually one, there was one person I wanted to have on here was her name's Anne Margolis. And she has some excellent information, mm -hmm. um, but she's, she comes from the, the natural birthing kind of movement, you know? And, and so if you need someone to consult with, um, you know, you can find a lot of medical doctors, a lot of OBGYNs. Those are like, you know, those are really easy to come across, but it's a little harder to find other people that um, sort of want to return, you know, to this whole natural birthing experience. And, and even if you use a combination, she has some really great um, thoughts and ideas about how to, to, um, you know, have a really healthy pregnancy and childbirth. So she, so anyway, oh, I wanted to have her on the summit mm -hmm. and, I, and I didn't get her, she was too busy. But, um, but, you know, like online consulting with people yeah. like her. Does she have a book? She's a book. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, yeah, she's a book. She does consulting. So there are things like that that you can do and consult before you even find. And then you go like, okay, I want this sort of, you know, um, support. And then you look into your local community as well. So, um, you know, to say, okay, I was reading in Anne's book, you know, yeah. this, and, you know, can we do this? You know, is this something we can do? So it gives you more ideas. It informs you a little bit more. It makes you a lot more empowered with that information. So there are people that online that you can find right. a lot of that, that do consulting and they do even programs and they, they make, help you to make birthing plans and stuff like that. So I highly recommend that. That's great. Yeah, doing research. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's like go the sequence. So we've got our birthing plan. We've found, um, Someone to partner with, uh, be it an OBGYN or a doula, and then pediatrician, family doctor, someone to help when the baby is born in, in the early years. Um, and by the way, your values <laughs> and what you learn is going to change. So you might change your mind during this. Um, and then you're probably going to. And then um, you might end up switching doctors at some point, And that's totally and probably to be expected and suggest that you're getting increasingly informed. Mm -hmm. um, so you have the baby, everything's awesome. Let's touch on um, like some immediate stuff, breastfeeding. Um, I do think if people aren't familiar with it, Carla, Vernix in the, the baby's microbiome and natural birth as opposed to C-section and then breastfeeding and then um, I'm gonna throw it out there, circumcision. Sure. So that kind of early, yes. early baby. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's <laughs> another thing in the in um, what you're thinking about when you're thinking about the birth, right? And um, so some people actually have yeah. their uh, planned C-sections. Um, some people, you know, I've been told the baby's too big, you're too small. You know, you've had a C -se emergency C-section, and this is like your second baby, and not a lot of yeah. practitioners are comfortable. B-backs, which is having a vaginal birth after you've had um, a C-section, uh, because it can be hard on the tissues. You've got yeah. scar tissue, and and you know, like mom's body is just not the same after that. Um, you know, so that's to be yeah. you know, considered. But um, you know, uh, so the point there is a real um, importance to the vaginal birth experience. There's a reason why, you know, that baby is born that way. And, but if you can't do it, there are ways to, I guess, to, to fix some of this. But when yes. you're born through the vaginal <laughs> canal, that's where they get all of their microbiome. They get all of the good bacteria and bad, whatever, all the bacteria that that mom has on her body. And that's that baby's immune system. And so that's, I mean, that, I mean, we're understanding now that that is so important that it actually can, can determine the health of that child for life right? For life. And so again, for life. interventions for life, but we can, you know, we can tweak and we can do all these kinds of things and improve, but we'll never have that opportunity to have that um, particular um, defense in place right at birth. So, um, so vaginal birth is extremely important, but if you can't, you didn't, you, you know, like all you can still, you know, fix that. Yeah. But, um, you know, so I highly encourage, we talked about this actually with like a couple other people, Jason Prawl and I talked in depth about this, which was really fun. Uh -huh. But, you know, so, so the moms can actually swab the baby 
with the eyes and the ears and the, you know, mouth, whatever, all yeah. like, like in different areas of the baby to with her own vaginal like secretion. Like, so, you know, you kind of swab them off yeah. swab the baby and people are going to be like, <gasps> I'm horrified. And that's disgusting. I'm like, but the baby's born out of yeah. your vaginal canal. Like this is something that's natural. I mean, it's come on. <laughs> populating that baby. You are giving that baby yeah. the, the proper microbiome they were supposed to be born with rather than whatever is floating around in the hospital or in the room that you've given birth or, you know, the pet person or touches that baby first or whatever. I mean, the, those things are, and that's another thing to plan in your vet, in your um, birthing plan is who's going to touch the gonna baby. Add that. Yes. Who's going to touch the baby? Who's going to, you know, and that's really good to have, you know, the family members hold the baby and that, you know, like we don't want a sterile environment, but we also don't want that baby plunked in, with the baby, you know, over in the hospital where there's God knows what kinds of bacteria. Um, so we want mom to be mm -hmm. the at the very beginning, right when that baby's born, on the chest. And it's not just like a central nervous system. Like, uh, it's like a step in development there. It's the bonding. It's the, the all yes. those hormones and chemicals going through that baby's body and mom's body and brain. Um, and it's also the microbiome, that connection. So it's the, the development of the microbiome. Absolutely. So we want that baby to be protected um, from any sort of, you know, infection or whatever else, that's where they get that, that first introduction to their own immune system. And then as you're breastfeeding, that mom continues to give that baby protection through the breast milk. So, you know, we don't want to heat it up, yeah. like, you know, like destroy all of the, the, the good stuff that's in there. Um, it's the perfect food for a baby, you know, is breast milk, the perfect food for a baby. Yeah. And actually that mom's breast milk changes with the baby's needs. So let's say they're both exposed to something, you know, in the environment, like there's strep going on or there's this, that breast milk will change to give that baby protection. So they're healthy, no, no, no. they're sick less, they have less reactivity, they won't react, they don't, you know, they're not going to be allergic to, you know, the breast milk. Um, unless, you know, I mean, there's, there are instances where the yeah. mom's eating something, the baby is, a, you know, has a reactivity to yeah. it, something a little yeah. bit depth that you can get into if you have problems that way. But for the most part, breastfeeding can be very uncomfortable at first. Your first yeah. mom feels like something's chewing on your nipple. It can be awful. And I'm not going to say this is all beautiful. It, it is, but it's not, I mean, beauty in nature isn't always easy and it's not always pretty. Okay. So I remember my firstborn, I was just like, I don't know, this is really painful. But it doesn't, it's not always painful, but it can be. So just be prepared for that and understand that you've got to move, you can move through all of this with your baby. And it's just, all of this is worth it. And there are ways to nurture and nourish yourself and take care of anything that's happening to you that's uncomfortable. So like breastfeeding, super important. Yes. If you can't, there are ways to, um, herbs you can take to actually improve milk supply um there are several of yeah. them yeah yeah so just do your research on that do and and ways to stimulate that that yeah that yeah the milk uh, like and and um and you mentioned so those are two two top things right when that baby's born two top things and you also mentioned circumcision be i mean i think circumcision yeah, I did. that category of things like vitamin k shot um you know like all these yeah. other interventions that we feel we need to um, impose on our babies. But then I just encourage people to always think about, is this necessary? Do I, is this necessary? And why am I doing this? Is it because everybody, it, yeah. or is there actually a reason for you to do it? Is, is it a religious thing or is yeah. it like dad, you know, or is it, you know, um, just everybody's done it and I've never really questioned it before, but I always encourage parents yeah. to be inquisitive, to question, to research, and then make your, your decision, not anything that someone's trying to put yeah. doing because they don't really know why they're doing it either. Right. So I think those are, those things are very, very, very important to reflect on and what you, yeah, plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you just brought up just like reinforces what we said in the beginning. This is such an awesome time to really wake up to owning owning the choices that you want to be making in your, in your life so you might who knows how old you are but say you're you're now 20 22 and you're like this is an awesome opportunity for you to say why have i been making the choices that i have been making 
lets me make sure I'm understanding why I make the choices I'm making going forward, right? And yeah. I think when the, the circumcision yeah. one or the, the emergency C-section, cost benefit analysis on all of them, you know, uh, what is the value to doing it? And is the trade off um, too high? I would throw in two things addition, if you do have um, end up with a C section, I would strongly encourage anyone listening if they do do that to end up um, getting their baby's primitive reflexes checked, or you can check them yourselves because going yeah. through the birth process is a a, a natural process and if there is an intervention like an emergency c-section or not an emergency um, the baby will have not experienced some of the movements and pressures that we were designed to and then they do later in life as soon as possible actually need to go through those movements that they would have or else you, you were talking about their nervous system will be retaining those um, which can set, set up some challenges going forward and the other one around um, breastfeeding Hire a lactation consultant yeah. if you have any problems. They are so well informed, and they they could they could pick up on things that um, the the doctors might not. You know, we weren't going to talk about tongue ties, but they are trained to look for things like that. Yeah. Um, and it could just be slight tweaks about what you're doing, and it's just so great to have a loving, informed person on your team. And I found lactation consultants to be that way in, in trainings I've done. I got to add to that. Yeah. Thank you for All right. So I got to add one thing. Okay, so about the compression. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that baby, yeah. they're actually supposed, their, their head is supposed to be compressed. So in some places, and I can't remember who was telling me this, it was in one of our interviews. And I think it was somewhere in, I think oh, I was Russia. Who was telling me this? Anyway, in Russia, they actually do that. They like do some kind of technique where they're compressing because it's part of the brain's development, actually. So they do this. It the baby yeah. More vaginally. And also, um, we're talking a lot about neurodevelopmental movement and primitive reflexes with Sonia's story, yes. um, with uh, Phyllis Books, Dr. Phyllis Books, and also uh, with yes. Annette Banyal. So Annette. Listen, to those, listen to those if you're interested yes. in primitive reflex integration. Yeah. You know, there's a hospital near where I live. If any baby has been born via C-section, they receive craniosacral therapy oh, in yes. the hospital. <gasps> Really? To get that input, isn't that awesome? That's beautiful. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's just in general, craniosacral therapy, I think, is is really beneficial. Um, but yeah, particularly in that situation. Yep. Really yep. nice way to stimulate and give input to the nervous system. All right, let's move on to uh, you know the crazy business of baby car seats, um, <laughs> what about harnesses, strollers, bounce points, plastic plastic and more plastic and uh, baby monitors um, and all the stuff that's going to be likely dumped on you at your baby shower. And so how do you make your choices, what you want, and then how do you sort of mitigate the, um, the ceremony, right, that we have? You have baby showers in our culture and people love to bestow these gifts on you. Um, and right now I hope the message we're communicating is to really take your time to be an in informed consumer and mama um and this would be an area i think would be really valuable for you to start informing people about yeah yeah okay well i mean yeah you you listed a few things and i think when i think about that i sort of think about some things that i have been um you know putting together about creating a safe and nurturing environment for your child right so i actually did write a piece about this and it was, it's really just, yeah. again, it's all in, in environment, right? Like it's after the baby's born, what's the environment that baby's going to be living, living in? And we, what we all as parents, new parents want that for our children. It's to, it to be safe. And so to, to make sure that happens, it's really uncovering the things that are unsafe that we actually don't know. I mean, we're all going to want to, you know, make sure that they have these healthy bodies and everything, but we don't really, not a lot of us know that Cheerios as a first food isn't great, especially since they're full of, it's full of glyphosate. Glyphosate. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good first food. And, you know, so, um, and, and so it's, it's um, not conducive to good health. And we just think it's kind of benign because it's kind of cute and they can pick it up and it's easy to do. But then if we really actually reflect, you know, those, these things in this child's environment, what they're being offered to eat, what they're putting in, you're putting in their bodies and what they, um, you know, and what they're being exposed to, those things are really, really important to, to pay attention to. So, 
Um, so after they're born, how do we do this? How do we create this safe an, an environment? You know, like, of, of course, like <laughs> saying the food, the water, like all those basics, you know, um, where are they sleeping? What kind of ventilation they're getting? Do we have mold in our house? You know, things like that. The, you know, the things in the immediate environment, um, putting the, the lotions and potions, what are we putting on our baby's skin? You know, like, are oh. we using like, you know, really heavy chemicals? And you know what is so crazy to me is that, you know, we have all these lavender scented, scented, um, lotions for babies and they say oh, it's very calming and you know and lavender is calming but only if it's yeah. an oil it's not the, the scent that is actually calming because it won't it, it's actually chemicals right so a natural natural baby yes. care products are so important and they're so much nicer and they actually do the job that they're supposed to do like something that's scented with a chemical is actually going to create all kinds of problems as opposed to something um you know scented with yeah. an essential oil that actually has medicinal herbal properties that are chemically, you know, doing things within that baby's brain to create this sense of calm and peace and relax. So, you know, looking at those things that we're putting on our, and on our babies too, and in their environments, like, I, I mean, this is one thing I'm going to say for sure. It's like never, ever redecorate a baby's room before they're born. Like, they, yeah. they, like because it will be full of chemicals, um, you know, VOCs from the paint, you know, off gassing new furniture. And again, like you're saying, you know, we have these baby showers, yeah. all that stuff's new. All of it's like going to be just all of it. And flame, all flame retardants. Yes. Yes. So, you know, you may want to set up something like, you know, um, like a registry, right? People do registries all the time for baby showers. Yeah. They pick a place that they think this has got really I good quality stuff for me. It could be an online. Be sure yeah. to to you know, like ordering things like that. Yeah. And, 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 and letting people know I'm really concerned about this. You and, like you know, I would love that you want to buy me something. Um, but here's something that we would actually, you know, use and would be really the best thing for my baby's health. And so, you know, being really clear about that right from the get go because you get these things and it's awkward and you feel like a jerk, you know, because you're, you know, you say, no thanks. You know, like, you know, it's hard. I mean, you love you and you love them and you, and everybody. Everybody's it celebrating a ritual. It's a beautiful thing to shower the it is a ritual. Yes. But we have to make sure that that shower is on acid rain, <laughs> you know? So, um, <laughs> you know, that just came to me. That was pretty clever. But anyway, so, um, you know, so, yeah, the toys, <laughs> you know, again, like teething rings that they're chewing that have chemicals in them, you know, paint. like we don't have lead paint in our toys really anymore, but we still need to be pay attention to the plastic. Why would you say plastic? Yes. The soft rubber ducky plastic is a no. It's a no. Sorry. There are alternatives. There are alternatives all over the place. It's there just are. out there finding out what those yeah. are. Giving the, your loved ones options, right? These are the things because I know yes. like with diet, you know, we'll go to a loved one's place and they'll be like, I didn't know what to feed you. And they felt stressed out about what I was coming over because we don't eat gluten, right? And it's like, no, no, no. Okay, here's something yeah. that worked for us. And then they're like, thank you. Because like, I yeah. didn't know what to get. I didn't know. Yeah. And it's causing me stress. And I want to do something for you, but I don't want it to be something that you're like, you know, and then we got to like, you know, not eat at the table. You know, it's awkward. So, you know, doing that, getting really clear on stuff like that and researching and finding these alternative things are really, really, really helpful. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, yeah. like, like harnesses, okay. and things, like bouncy toys, like bouncy toys, some of those things, and you might get them. Like, you and you're like, well, that's going to impede their movement. I'm not going to use this. I'm going to put my baby on the floor so they learn how to roll and all this stuff. So if you have that, you just might have to take it back. It's okay. You can return something and then just get something that yeah. you can use, right? So one other thing I'm going yeah. to mention, I have, because I know you, do, do, wait, Kate, you, yes. can jump in. you can jump in because I know you have a question I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, as you were talking, the, what, the, what came to the top of my mind is babies is big business. It's big money. It's big business. Fabulous marketing around it, right? Oh, yeah. And you're like new mom. It's so fun to get all these cute, fuzzy, stretchy, soft things. So I think just keep in your head, um, you already know this, but just because something is marketed to you as for baby, yeah. not so much. Not necessarily yeah. so much. The upside of that is Babies are big business, so there are tons of companies coming out there with the welfare of babies and moms in the forefront. So it's, it's fortunate that we've hit a tipping point where those businesses are coming up and 
having babies is a lot of work and, and you're going to be drawn to the convenience of these bouncy toys and the, the strollers and all of that stuff. And yes, you need a car seat for safety yes. purposes. But you just want the least toxic car seat. But from a, a convenience perspective, I just, I would say challenge yourself to say, this is highly convenient, but is it really in the best interest of my child? And what would be another good alternative? For sure. All right, that's my piece. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I love that you mentioned that because it's, it's, it's so true. It's the same thing in, you know, the food industry and marketing to kids that they should be eating food yeah. and Lucky Charms because there's all these brightly colored packages and they need it and the kids get totally addicted to the sugar. I mean, that is, it's marketing. And, and again, you know, but some of it is really fun, but reveling in that, the community, that, that wonderful feeling that yeah. you has, like I said, you know, gathering in celebration and preparation for this baby is like, it's a beautiful thing. And we, uh, th we need that. It's just to leave all that kind of yeah. garbage behind and really make the right decisions. And when you said car seats, like let's say you need something that you can't find that's non toxic. You're not going to have a wood car seat. Okay. Sorry, but you're not, it's going to be plastic. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no such thing. Like, I mean, you know, so maybe you'll find one that has like organic cotton cover. And if you can't afford that, you leave it out to off gas. Right. So you take it out of the package. Yeah. You get rid of all the packaging out of your home and you leave it somewhere that can, that's ventilated that, you know, people aren't living in and you let it off gas for like weeks, you know, and, and just let the like, release some of the, or you maybe be able to, might be able to take off some of the fabric and wash that beforehand. Again, baby yeah. clothes, baby clothes is another thing. Take all of like, if you can get organic cotton and, you know, like chemical free, perfect. If you can't, you wash that first. Don't put the baby in a brand new outfit that you've left in the, the drawer that you just bought. Always wash it first. So we, there yeah. are ways, you know, in using detergents that are not just baby friendly tied. Like, I, no, um, you know, that, that stuff is Forget really the baby friendly. No, it needs to be, you know, a, yeah. a chemical free um, detergent because so many babies have reactivity and they're so sensitive and they're like they're they've got eczema you know from like two weeks old right so there's a reason for that and and so I think that's partially the gut but microbiome but also the environment yeah right? so right so the soaps that we're using all of that stuff but yeah. another thing I wanted to say is that um, in EMFs, okay, so we're gonna, I, I told you we we're gonna come back to this, yeah. and another very hot, like toxic source of EMFs um, are those wireless baby monitors. And um, if we want a baby monitor, we can get one that's plugged in, put it away, you still want it way far yeah. away from that baby, because even clock radios will give yeah. off EMFs, um, you know, so they yeah. have the digital, right? So I had a, uh, my son had a headache, for a long time when he was 10, I think he was. And I was like, I was starting to learn about this. He's 21 now, but I was starting to learn about this at the time. And I took the clock radio out of his room and no more headaches, no more headaches. So, but what we're doing with the, the Wi-Fi again at this stage of life, and even when they're in gestation, is that Wi-Fi is actually shown to breach the blood brain barrier. So it damages the blood brain barrier in the brain. And so it has the potential to cause autoimmunity, um, you know, uh, inflammation, um, and, and a suppression of the immune system. So yeah. just, you know, so, and then, oh, and also you and I were talking about this too, is a central nervous system. So we, you know, it's, it's like when these things are happening, not bodies in fight or flight. And again, that's a very catabolic state. Yeah create all kinds of behavior issues with your children. Um, you know, like the list goes on, learning disabilities, that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah. baby monitors, thank you, but no thanks. Um, I'm going to take it back and get an old school one, or I'm just going to kind of keep the door open a little bit, you know, and, and, and watch every once in a while. Yeah. So, Cause I know we want those babies to be safe. Um, it's just that we need to make sure we're using the safe tools to make that happen. Yes. I really think, Carla, it's a return to simplicity Yep, is a really valuable message and a way to sort of not make it so overwhelming and to cut to the chase. Um, you know, I think, yes, you need the car seat, but my advice would be, even if the baby finally fell asleep and you don't want to disturb them, you got to take them out of the car seat. Don't let them sleep in that car seat for yeah. the next 10 hours. You got, got to take them out and, and put them down on the ground where they're free. To, yep. to move but yeah I think a return to simplicity you know once I had my second child first child I watched like feverishly is is he moving is he still alive can I see him in the you know in the monitor yeah. and the second one I'm like yeah 
you know, I'll hear him if there's a problem or the, the cat will notify me because the cat's going to go in and out and yeah, return to simplicity, I think is, is a big message. All right. I don't want us to, um, I don't want people to feel really overwhelmed by everything that has been said here. So what are some really nice threads that, that we can sort of tease out of this that, that, that um I, that touch on enough of the messages that we've been trying to communicate. What do you think of the overarching ways to approach us? Okay, I have one more thing I want to mention, and we'll get to the overarch. Is um, we keep returning to yeah. the development, right? So at the time when they're, you know, so yeah. we, have, we want to be paying attention to developmental my, milestones, but also there's this movement to like more is better, faster, like earlier is better. You know, like we push, 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 push to like. You know, I'm going to have my kid reading at three, you know, like, no, it's actually not good for their brain development to be reading that early. And, um, you know, when they read later, they actually have a better time of it. And so when they're ready, right. But, but so there's two things going on with that, with develop, with development is watching the milestones because then we can pick out, you know, like, well, wait, why isn't this baby, why isn't this child talking in there like three, you know, or, you know, sort of saying gibberish or you know, like things like that, we want to actually really pay attention. It didn't roll, you know, skipped a, skipped a milestone. Yeah. It never rolled, but just kind of, well, not yeah. rolled. It didn't crawl, but went straight to walking. You know, that's a, that they need yeah. to crawl. That's, they, that's actually part of their brain development. So paying attention to that is really important. And then finding, you know, ways to like actually back up and integrate that reflex or something like that. But again, learn yeah. more of those talks that I was talking about because this is too much to do here. But at the same time, recognize yeah. um, that so, sort of slow is okay, you know, and like, and, and, and in certain things we don't need to push, you know, so it's not always a problem, you know, so knowing your child, um, you know, where we might be missing something or where it's just, it's fine. Let it just unfold, right? So there's that kind of balance. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah. I I, well, I'm glad you brought it up because it's the, what you're talking about is very true to my heart. Um, I would challenge, just like my message in this has been to be informed yourself. If you're a pediatrician, you have an instinct and say, just, is this right? Like, look at the way my child's creeping right now. Just, I'm a new mom. I've never seen, they're had a baby creep before, but this doesn't look right to me. If the pediatrician says, oh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I want you to worry about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want you to, no, I want you to worry about it. I want you to be personally informed. Crack open a book. There are v videos all over the internet about what right, you know, biologically correct creeping looks like, crawling looks like. And I think most pediatricians are not trained in, in yes, we're human beings. There's a little variance, but there actually is a correct way to do these developmental milestones that children need to go through. And I'll tell you, having them go through it at that age and maybe making little adjustments to the baby back then will save a whole lot of heartache than years later, years later, years later. And so I guess my message was in there was once again, get informed yourself, crack open a book, their pictures, their videos of what developmental milestones look like and how, what needs to happen to achieve them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, for sure. And so, and then, but then that, that, that kind of leads okay. me to my overarching point. Yes. Is that, you know, it's more, I mean, we need to do, and in our environment, yeah, we're kind of like watching for these milestones and whatever else, and we have interventions and all these kinds of things because our babies are in baby buckets. They're not moving right. Like, you know, the environment's tough. Like, baby's born now, it's a tough environment, you know? And so, um, and all these interventions that we think are convenient that are actually impeding the, our child's development. So, you know, which is a convenient food or convenient, you know, um, gadgets, you know, that are actually damaging, you know, because of the Wi-Fi or because of, you know, the, that, that we, they don't have the human contact that they actually need. Rather, you know, it's like a, something doing the jiggling, yeah. something, you know, bouncing them or something like, you know, stuff like that. So, <laughs> right, I think that it's, yeah. I think it's more, you know, like returning to, um, our wisdom and I think oh and one thing I don't want to forget to mention is mama care that that is essential yeah. because moms like they take care of themselves okay yeah even pre-pregnancy if they're planning they take care of themselves while while the baby's you know within them and in the gestation period they take care of themselves you know with childbirth and maybe like a week or two later and then the mama care goes out the window you know like and, and so you know we've got yeah. a lot of women that are suffering with postpartum depression and 
you know, a disconnect um, with their bodies and, and they're, they're giving, 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 and they're exhausted. But I think, you know, um, this is a time for reflection. This is a, it's okay to be slow. I actually think that, you know, I wrote actually poems about my son. And this is when it really came to realization for me was my, my firstborn was that this, this is okay. Like it was the beauty of that stillness. I, I can't even explain how, how wonderful that was. And to have him, even though oh, he was nursing definitely. 45 minutes out of an hour, you know, like literally, because this kid, all he did was eat. I mean, but, that, but, that, that, but he was fat and huge. Like he was born little and then he was, you know, but um, so, you know, I didn't know that was, <laughs> I had to surrender to it. I just had to say, this is my yes. doing now. And I don't have to be doing this. This is your job. Running, running, running. Yes. This is my job. And it, my job to take care of him and of me, right? Because I did this, I I did this, and I he needs me, and I need me, and um, so it was. It, so I think that returning to that wisdom, that we have a chance to listen to our bodies, to listen to our children, um, to you know enjoy this experience of life. Like this is a like the, call it a miracle. And it really, it is. We don't get this. How does this work? Like, what is this? And so it, this is a really beautiful time. Yeah. So I think returning to this whole natural mama hood, I think is wonderful. We don't have to be a hippie. You don't have to be living barefoot in the forest. That's fun. You know, I mean, uh, but you can yeah. probably have the spirit that of that, right. Of that sort of, experience yes. if you're in an urban environment or whatever you create that within yourself and community huge it's a huge like you know um we were talking about the baby shower talking about you know celebrating this life and being with other parents you know who are going through this same stage of life or even ones that have gone before yeah later right you know we're mentors as well as we're we're, we're learning you know so that whole sense of community um you know i think is really mm -hmm important uh to be uh, it's really conducive to having a healthy mom healthy baby and then just a vibrant future yeah that's beautiful i uh, i think my thread for this this conversation we've had i've been talking about being informed and being conscious so that's also cerebral but what is paramount actually even to that mm -hmm. is you're going to um Come into contact with for your first time in your life your mom instincts if you haven't had a child before and there is nothing more accurate and more powerful forget the cerebral brain <laughs> it is the, you're in this intuition and this this mother's intuition that you're going to be gifted with um and it is it is far more powerful. I would say lead with that and let the brain be the subservient <laughs> follower to that, that mom brain and, and all will be well. Yes. Thank you for adding that, Courtney. And they are to thank you very much for taking on this challenge and interviewing me for the Children's Health Summit for oh, yeah. I appreciate it. It was an excellent conversation. I'm so glad that um, you were the one to do this particular talk because I think that we had so much to say. I hope we didn't overwhelm people. I think that, I don't yeah. think so. I think really when you come across, come through this, it, uh, parenting is, can be overwhelming. I mean, it's a lot to learn, period, right? Might as well yeah. hear some things that might be, you know, really useful to maybe, the, you know, um, curtail some of that, you know, stuff that could happen down the road that isn't as fun. <laughs> so I really appreciate you yeah. doing stuff with me and um, I hope everybody enjoyed it. And thanks a lot again, Courtney. Yeah, my absolute pleasure, Carla. I hope you enjoyed this interview and be sure to listen to more interviews from this timely and groundbreaking series. If you would like more information, guidance, and support through your family's health journey, and or want to join our growing community of professionally trained family health coaches, please visit us at healthyfamilyformula.com. Together, we can turn the tide for the future health of our children. May you and your families be well.